So now, here's five awesome apocalyptic stories that I want to recommend to you highly. These are ones that have been read again and again. These are stories, my friends, that out of many, there are tons and tons of apocalyptic uh, books, novels, stories, short stories, etc. These are the ones that over the years I've kind of culled together as my favorites, so I hope these are helpful for you. So my first recommendation is perhaps for you, if you're thinking right now, yeah, but I'm not sure I'd be into this apocalyptic literature, and you know, it just seems a little bit heavy, blah, blah, blah. Well, my first recommendation is Wastelands, Stories of the Apocalypse. And here's the great part. They're short stories. These are volumes that contain many, I think something like 20-some stories in each volume, where they present a new author in every story, and they tell a unique perspective on some apocalyptic situation. So this is a great way to kind of introduce you to the genre. You can just read a short story at a time. Read one maybe before you go to bed at night, or, you know, one um, once a week or something, and finish the book in a month. Who knows? But here's a great collection of short stories written by some of the best authors in the field. You've got people like Nancy Cress, Orson Scott Card, Stephen King, Hugh Howey, Juno Diaz, and even George R.R. R. Martin in Volume 1 of Wastelands has an amazing short story that's in there. These are some great, great authors, and they present this world to you in a way that's exciting and very accessible. The next book I want to recommend to you is One Second After by William R. Forston. This is a newer book. It came out recently, just in the past several years. This is the story of how an electromagnetic pulse bomb basically cuts out and destroys all electronics for the entire North American continent and what happens because of that. It's amazing. It's told in a way that follows this, um, this one particular family and where they live and how they kind of survive and what happens in the surrounding areas and it gets really intense. And what's wild about this story is they actually present it in a way the author in the foreword talks about how this is something that could really happen in the United States. These EMPs are not science fiction. They're real. They could actually happen. So it's kind of a, if you will, a forecast if something ever that bad were to happen and or God forbid. <laughs> The next apocalyptic literature book that I want to recommend to you is On the Beach by Neville Shute. This is a book that's considered a classic. It's been around for a long time and it's just as powerful today as it was back then, I'm sure. The story takes place in Australia, although it doesn't um, describe an entire world-ending um, event. But what's interesting about this story is it's about the people and how they deal psychologically with the fact that they're going to die. They know the world is ending, they know that their time is, is drawing shorter every single day, and it's about what they do, how do they react, what do the relationships do. And it's super interesting, very well told, um, and I highly recommend this one to you. The next book is Swan Song by Robert McCammon. This book is apocalyptic literature with a fantasy, almost, um, magical side to it. It's very, very interesting. Not only do you have kind of the world coming to an end in this, you know, nuclear holocaust type situation, but you have how society continues on after that, those people that survive, with this other element, this, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a, shall I say, a spiritual element or a deeply metaphorical evil versus good, capital G, capital E, and it's super interesting. Um, highly recommend it. It will surprise you, and it's not what you think. The next book that I want to mention to you is probably one you've heard of. You might have even seen the film. It was a popular film. And that is The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Apocalyptic literature? Absolutely. It's about the end of the world and this father and son and how they are trying to survive one day at a time on this road getting to this destination that they're trying to go to. Beautiful story. It's haunting. I saw the movie as well. Very well done. But I would recommend reading the book first because the book, of course, gets a lot more into the inner thoughts of the characters and what they're going through. And it's pretty intense. But if you want a kind of a nice primer to this whole entire genre, start there. The Road. And the last book that I want to share with you is Alas Babylon by Pat Frank. 
This is a book that is very well received. It's considered kind of a classic in certain um, circles. And it's more of a traditional story of the world's going to come to an end. Certain, I won't tell you how it is, but there's this kind of little community that's able to survive. But it's interesting because it's how do they survive? How do they establish a new law and order? How do they get clean water? It's like more of the nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty of survival after the end of the world. And it's very, very interesting. It's a great um, introduction to kind of the brass tacks, the bottom line of, okay, here's the new world we live in. We have to try to survive. What do we do? What's day one? And it goes through all of that. It's very interesting. So I hope that these books sound interesting to you. I highly recommend them. That's why I'm talking about them. I think apocalyptic literature is one that is very fitting for the world in which we live, not because I think the world's coming to an end, but because I believe that it gives us a medium to discuss these types of issues where we see tremendous evil happening around us all the time, and yet we're trying to survive, we're trying to have normal lives, normal relationships. These books help us explore those ideas and bring them out and ask our own lives or ask our own questions about our own lives. How are we doing? What, are, what ways are we surviving well and where are we cutting corners? These are the types of things that I think books bring out in us and give us a chance to think about and to talk about with those we love. So thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Jeremy. This is Mavum Books. You might think that we're new, but we've been around for a while. We're just back after a long hiatus. Please comment, subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it. Most importantly, we want to hear from you. Give us your thoughts. Have you read any of these books? Have you seen any of the movies that were made? Talk to us about it. We'd love to hear your ideas and thoughts in the comments. Go find your voice. So it's kind of a, if you will, a forecast if something ever that bad were to happen, and or God forbid. <laughs> They're short stories. These are volumes that contain many, I think something like 20 some stories in each volume. And read one maybe before you go to bed at night or, you know, one um, once a week or something and finish the book in a month. Who knows? Uh, I don't think it sounds <laughs>